Hi, I'm Mike Caruso. I created the Natural Approach to Guitar Learning series. These are the finest programs ever written for guitar. They're complete in every way. You can practice them or use them as lifetime guitar reference guides. In this video, I will present 10 pentatonic scales that you can use to greatly enhance your improvised solos. There are five basic scales for each of the 10 pentatonic scales. I will play each of these basic scales using two notes per string, starting on each of the scale or starting notes on the sixth string. Please note, when I play these scales, I am not using my eyes. I've trained myself to play strictly by sound, and this is how you should learn the scales. If you say to yourself, oh, I can't see his fingers, he's going too fast, you're using your eyes. When I play the scales, please concentrate on the sound of the scale, not its visual appearance. If you learn these scales by sound, you'll easily play the scales and the correct fingering. Also, please view this entire video as I will have some wonderful suggestions for you. Also, all the scales will begin in this G position. Welcome to scale one. Scale one is our major scale and the notes in the scale are G, A, B, D, E, G, A, B, D, E, G, A. The pentatonic scale can also be viewed as an arpeggio. We have three note arpeggio. That's an arpeggio with three different notes four note and five note. If we take the G, the B, and the D note from our scale, we would have a G major chord. And we would have a three note arpeggio. G, B, D, G, B, D, G, B. If we add the E note, now we have G, B, D, E, we would have a G6 chord. And we would have a four note arpeggio. G, B, D, E. G, B, D, E. G, B. The last note is our A, which will be our ninth. And when I add that to the G6 chord, I have a G, 6, 9. And I would have a five note arpeggio. G, A, B, D, E, G, A, B, D, E, G, A, which is our pentatonic scale. So scale one is our G, 6, 9 scale in arpeggio, which you can use against any G major chord. Scale one, G, A, B, D, E, G, A, B, D, E. The second note of the scale is the starting note for the next scale. The two notes per string sends us back and forth across the neck and that's all it does. Let's try three notes per string, starting on the G note using the same scale sound. The three notes per string sends us up and down the neck, and that's all it does. 
In order for you to move back and forth and up and down the neck, we would have to combine the two and three notes. When you wish to move back and forth on the neck, you play two notes per string. When you wish to move up and down the neck, you play three notes per string. I'll move around the neck using two, three, and four notes. Now the four notes usually comes into play without you even having to practice it. Now this is just a short example and it's not for you to copy. By combining two, three, and four notes, I have put the neck into one unit. I have mastered the neck, it is just that simple. Now when I improvise, the only thought in my mind are my creative notes. Also, our G6-9 scale is also used as a minor scale and it's played against an E minor chord. So if we start here on the E note, which we could call the root, the notes would be E, G, A, B, D, and that becomes an E minor 7 suspended fourth, which is the same as our G6-9. Welcome to scale two. For scale two, we take the E note of scale one and move it to the F. The notes are now G, B, D, F, which is a G seventh chord. When we add the A, the ninth, we have a G ninth. So scale two is our G ninth scale on arpeggio and can be used against any G seventh chord. Scale two. G, A, B, D, F, G, A, B, D, F, G, A. Now three notes. When playing three notes, it's important to use the fingering that sets up the next string. For this scale, the first four notes are G, A, B, D. So I want to get to this D with the first finger. If I play fingering one, two, four, one, my finger falls naturally on D flat. So one, two, four is not the correct fingering. If I use fingering one, one, three, one, 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 three is correct because I got to the D with my first finger. The next four notes are D, F, G, A. So I want to get to this A with the first finger. If I play one, one, three, one, I'm on B flat, so one, one, three is not correct. If I play one, two, four, one, that's correct. So for this scale on the sixth and fifth strings, this fingering would be one, one, three, one, two, four. And the rest of the scale is all one, one. I'll play the entire scale now. Once again, I'll move around the neck using two and three notes. Just an example, not for you to copy. Once again, by combining two, three, and four notes, I have put the neck into one unit of sound. I have mastered the neck using the pentatonic scales. Once again, 
scale two is our G9 scale and arpeggio. Welcome to scale three. For scale three, we take the F note of scale two and we move it to an F sharp. The notes are G, B, D, F sharp. Beautiful D major seven. Add the ninth A. G major ninth. So scale three is your G major ninth scale and arpeggio and can be used against any G major chord. S scale three. G, A, B, D, F sharp. G, A, B, D, F sharp. G, A. Now three notes. I'll just move on now. Welcome to scale four. For scales four, five, and six, we repeat scales one, two, and three, but we change them to minor. And the way we do that, we take the B note and change it to a B flat. So for scale four, the notes are G, B flat, D, E. G minor sixth. A, D, A. G minor ninth. So scale two is your G minor scale and arpeggio and can be used against any G minor chord or G minor ninth chord. You can also take the G6 9 scale and lower the B minor 6 9. Scale 4 G A B flat D E G A B flat D E G A Now three notes. Welcome to scale five. For scale five, the notes are G, B flat, D, F. G minor seventh chord. A, D, A. G minor seven, A, nine. The minor seven is major, and the minor ninth is major. Actually, the top part of the chord is the B flat major seven. Add the G, B flat major seven, six. So scale five would be our G minor seven add ninth scale or B flat major seven six scale and you can use it against a G minor seven or any B flat major seven chord. Scale five, G, A, 
B flat D F G A B flat D F G A Now three notes. Welcome to scale six. For scale six, we take our G major seventh from our scale three, and we lower the B to a B flat. G minor major seventh. If we add the, if we go back to our major ninth, we lower the B. We have a, our second minor ninth scale and chord, and can be used against any G minor chord. What's different about this particular scale is that the inside is very augmented and it's usually used against this progression. So when you get to this chord, then you would use the scale. Scale six, G, A, B flat, D, F sharp. G, A, B flat, D, F sharp. Now three notes. Welcome to scale seven. Starting with scale seven, we introduce our diminished sound. And the way we do that we take our G ninth chord and we lower the ninth a half step. Flat nine. When musicians see the flat nine, they improvise against it using a diminished scale, diminished arpeggio. But the problem with that is you're stuck in this diminished sound, it's just nowhere to go. But with our pentatonic flat nine, now listen to this. You have that fifth note opens up a whole new world of improvising for you. So scale seven is our G seven flat nine scale and arpeggio, and you can use it against a flat nine or a G seventh. Scale seven, G, A flat, B, D, F, G, A flat, B, D, F, G, A flat.
welcome to scale eight. For scale eight, we take our G ninth chord and we raise the ninth. Wow, what a sound. It's a fabulous sound. This is a G ninth chord. I'm gonna take the ninth and raise it. Raise ninth. It's a fabulous sound. Now, if you take the A sharp and change the name to B flat, you realize that that's the minor note of G. But in the chord, we have the major note B. So we have minor and major together. And that's what's given us this wonderful sound. A lot of guitarists will say, I'll just use a number one minor scale and that'll take care of that. Well, you can do that, but listen to it. I don't like that C note. Now listen to it. So scale eight is our raised ninth scale in arpeggio. You can use it against a raised ninth. You can use it against a flat nine or a G seven. Scale eight, G, B flat, B, D, F. G, B flat, B, D, F, G, B flat. The flat nine and the sharp nine can be considered diminished. When you play the diminished scale, there's the A flat and A sharp. Welcome to scale nine. Starting with scale nine, we introduce our augmented sound. And the way we do that is we take our G seventh chord, and we lower the fifth to half step. Flat five, beautiful sound. If we take the ninth, now we have a D flat seven plus five. So it can be very confusing. So to make this simple, let's just view this as our G seven flat five scale. I'll take it one step further. If you play a D flat seventh chord and lower the fifth, is right here, you end up with the same chord picture as G7 flat 5. G7 and D flat are flat 5s of each other. And what that means is the flat 5 of G is D flat, and the flat 5 of D flat is G. It's really A double flat, but to make it simple, let's just call it G. So scale 9 is our G7 flat 5 scale in arpeggio, and you can use it against any flat 5 or G7 chord. Scale 9. G, A, B, D flat, F. G, A, B, D flat, F, G, A. What is interesting about this scale is when you play it, Pay attention to the white and black, white being your position marker and black is in between. So when you play, you alternate white, black, white, black, third and second string of the same colors. So you have white, black, white, black, black, white. All right, scale two.
three notes. Welcome to scale 10. For scale 10, we take our G seventh chord and we raise the fifth plus five. Now I mentioned that scale nine and 10 are played exactly the same, but in different places. I'll show you how we arrive at that. Let's go back to our flat five scale. Scale two, the notes are A, B, D flat, F, G. If we change the D flat name to C sharp and leave out the B, the notes are A, C sharp, F, G. A7 plus five. Now, if you add the B, E ninth, it's G7 flat five, D flat seven flat five, it's too confusing. If we take scale two, of our flat five, we're gonna move it back to, and that becomes scale one of our sharp five. Scale 10, G, A, B, D sharp, F, G, A, B, D sharp, F, G, A. Three notes. The way to proceed with this program is to begin with scale one. Play the basic scales, steady eighth notes, when you're comfortable with scale one, begin scale two, do the same thing, and continue until you can play all 10 scales. Once you have the basic scales for all 10 pentatonic scales, play them every day strictly by sound, straight eighth note picking. In time, if you play them every day by sound, they'll begin to show up in your improvising. If you wish to put the neck into one unit, begin with scale one, do the basic scales, do the three note per string, and when you're comfortable, start moving around the neck with two and three notes. Don't worry about the four notes, that usually comes into play without you having to work on it. Keep doing it over and over until you can play with steady eighth notes three to five minutes once you put the neck into one unit, it's yours forever. And usually, the rest of the scales are easy to do. I have another video on YouTube called How to Master Scales, No Memorization, No Visual Aids. This video will also show you how to put the neck into one unit, not only with the pentatonic scale, but with the seven note major scale. It's a fabulous video. If you watch it, please watch the entire video. I have written a 10 pentatonic scale support manual. In this manual, I diagram all the scales with the correct fingerings. More importantly, I have created chord progressions for you to improvise against. The program comes with CD backing tracks. These tracks are downloaded so you don't need a DVD player. If you're interested in this manual, 
you can find it at www.thenaturalapproach.com and that address is shown in my description. One of the most important techniques that I feel all guitarists should consider is the ability to sight read. I have written a 10 book or 10 series sight reading program. It is the most comprehensive, complete, most enjoyable sight reading program ever written for a guitar. It comes in two books, five series in book one, five series in book two. And each book has five CD backing tracks so when you play the tracks, I'm playing the notes with you, just as if I'm sitting in your room with you. It's a fabulous program. All the music in the program is original music. I cover from the beginning of the neck to the 21st fret. If you're a guitarist who just enjoys guitar and practices in his room, this program can add so much spice to your practice session. More importantly, you can go on the internet now and download guitar solos by famous artists. And those solos are all written out in notation. With this program, you'll be able to read those solos. Imagine playing those solos and feeling what the artist felt when he played it. Imagine how this would help you with your creativity. If you're a guitar teacher, regardless of what you're teaching your student, sight reading can only be a plus. If you want to be a professional guitarist, you're going to have to read. I made my living as a professional guitarist and I can tell you, every date I had to read. You want to do studio work, jingles, shows, and there are a lot of artists who will be traveling around the United States doing concerts. They look for guitarists who can read and if you can read, you'll get the call. I hope you enjoyed this video. I had a great time doing it. I hope you'll take some of my suggestions. If you're interested in the sight reading program, it can be found at www.thenaturalapproach.com. Thank you for watching the video, and I wish you great guitar playing.